bless the Lord so, so much for this opportunity that he has accorded to me this morning. Take this opportunity to thank God for our parents in the house, our bishop and our mom. May the Lord bless you richly. Tell your neighbor, new frontiers. <laughs> new territories. New horizons. And new dimensions. Praise the name of the Lord. I don't know how many of us were there on the third of uh, this month as we celebrated 40 years. And it was a great, great time of celebration. And even as we celebrated, God was so gracious to give us a word as a church. And as the word was being released, those few phrases that we have said, new frontiers, new territories, new horizons, new dimensions, new experiences, everything was new, new, new. And as they were being proclaimed towards the church, I remember I was standing and I was telling God, even as DCIK is moving into this season, the new season that is being released at this moment, my family and I are equally moving in that direction. Praise the name of the Lord. And so I remember picking my book and I was very quick to write the things that um, the man of God was saying because to me it was not just a preaching like any other day. It was a word that the Lord was releasing that was going to determine our 41 and going forward. Praise the name of the Lord. And so we have already gotten into that season because 40 years is behind. God has worked with us for the 40 years. And now we have gotten into another season. And that season is a season that is being defined by the few words that we've spoken about. The new territories, the new horizons, the new, the new, the new. And this morning, I'd just like us to look at it briefly. As the speaker was speaking, I couldn't help but think of the scripture in the book of, uh, of Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12 verse 1. When God is speaking to Abraham and he's telling Abraham, arise and leave your country, leave your people. In other words, God was telling him, leave everything that is familiar, leave everything that is common. He says, now the Lord said to Abraham, get out of your country. And you know, your country is a familiar environment. From your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. Praise the name of the Lord. And then he goes ahead to, uh, to explain um, to Abraham the things that he will do with him. He says, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. Praise the name of the Lord. And so what God was telling Abraham is that time is up for you to continue being around the places that have been common, being around your comfort zone. It is time to move to a place that may be unfamiliar with you, to a place that you have never seen again. But God is very gracious. At the end of us one, God is saying to a place that I will show you. Praise the name of the Lord. And you know, as that word show, when I was looking at it, I couldn't help but just think of uh, the tourists who normally come to the nation of Kenya. How many of us have seen a lion? Not on TV. Sio kwa TV, bwana How many of us have seen an elephant? You know, it is sad that tourists come from all the way to come and see a lion in our nation. Na sisi ya but I was thinking about the word show, and what was coming into my mind is the way when the tourists come and they are in these vehicles, the tour vehicles that ile inakuwaga na shimo hapo katikati, the open, the open space that is uh, in, uh, at the center. And normally they come out through that open space and they have a gadget that they call a binoculars. Tunajua binoculars. It's normally something that has two sides. So you put it in your eyes. And when you put it in, in your eyes, it can be able to zoom very far so that you are able, from a distance, you'll be able to see a lion in the horizon. Praise the name of the Lord. And so God, as it were, was just reminding me when he uses the word, I will show you to a land that I'm going to show you. And I was just thinking of this father who has come with a child 
um, to, to tour the nation of Kenya, and this father has a binoculars, but the, when the father sees the lion, and the father is telling the son, come near me so that I can show you. Come and check through my binoculars, and you'll be able to see the lion. And so, for that son to be able to see the lion, it means they have to come very near the father so that the father can hold for him the binoculars, and when he looks through it, he'll be able to see the lion. Praise the name of the Lord. The land that the Lord has, had promised Abraham, God already knew where it was. And therefore, Abraham needed to walk at very close range in fellowship with the Lord God for him to be able to be shown that land where he was going. And this morning, the Lord has promised us new frontiers. He has promised us new territories. We do not know what the new ter territories will look like. We are used to, the, to what has been in the past. But if we are going to walk at close range with the Lord, then he will enable us through his binoculars that is called faith to be able to see the land that he has promised us. Praise the Lord. He'll be able to show us the territories that he's talking about. He'll be able to show us the horizons that he's talking about. He'll be able to show us the frontiers that he is talking about. But it will only happen if the body of Jesus Christ called Deliverance Church, Kasarani Zimmerman, and if you as an individual will be willing to walk in constant fellowship with the Lord so that you can be able to look through his binoculars that is called faith, and see where we are going. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, what are frontiers and what are territories? A territory is a place that has boundaries but is under a rulership, under a jurisdiction of a ruler. That is what we call a territory. Like, for example, Kenya is a territory and that's why we normally call it a sovereign land. Kenya is a territory. Uganda is a territory. And so a territory is a geographical region or a spiritual region under a particular leadership or rulership. That is what we define as a territory. Then what is a frontier? Because today we are going to look at a topic empowered for new territories and new frontiers. Empowered for new territories and frontiers. Now, what's a frontier? A frontier is a borderline. A borderline. Those of us who, by God's grace, have gone out of this nation. When you get, maybe if you're going uh, by, by road and you're going to Tanzania, assuming you're going either through Namanga or you're going through Isibania, when you get to the borderline, you cannot just cross unless you are given permission by the authorities of that nation. That's what we call a borderline. And so when God is telling us that he's giving us new territories, he is telling us that he's giving us new frontiers, one thing that needs to come into our minds is that it will not be a walk in the park. Praise the name of the Lord. It is worth noting. Just like I cannot walk and get into Uganda without me going with a permit and it being stamped. Just like I cannot just say I am going to the U.S. when I don't have a visa and I don't have a passport. There are things that will be necessary for us to be able to get to the new horizons, to the new frontiers, to the new territories. There are things that we will need to do differently if we are going to be able to activate the word that was given to us on the 3rd of November this year. Bado Tupo. Do we still want to occupy new territories? Praise the name of the Lord. And today, I just want us to look at um, a story of one person who had to cross the new territory or possess new territories. And we are going to look at 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 6 to 8. 2 Samuel chapter 5, verses 6 to 8. This is what the Bible says. And the king and his men went to Jerusalem. Which king? King David. King David has just been coronated. He is now the new king after Saul has died. And now the Bible says that him 
and his men, they went to Jerusalem against the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land, who spoke to David saying, you shall not come in here, but the blind and the lame will repel you, thinking David cannot come here. Verse 7. Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion. That is the city of David. Mm -hmm. Now David said on that day, whoever climbs up by the way of the water shaft and defeats the Jebusites, the lame and the blind, who are hated by David's soul, he shall be chief and captain. Therefore they say, the blind and the lame shall not come into the house. Praise the name of the Lord. So David has just been crowned king. And when he's crowned king, he realizes that Jerusalem, which was a part of the Canaanite land that had already been given to them as God had promised their father Abraham, was still under the leadership or under the occupation of the Jebusites. In other words, the kings that had been there before were not very careful to take over Jerusalem. So the many other places had already been occupied by the Israelites. But for Jerusalem, it was still under the jurisdiction of the Jebusites. In other words, it was a territory that was being reigned over by the Jebusites. Praise the name of the Lord. And I was looking at the word Jebusites and wondering what does the word mean. Jebusites were a tribe, a Canaanite tribe that occupied Jerusalem. But when you look at the Hebrew meaning of the word Jebusite, it means to be trampled down, to be looked down on. So David has taken leadership of the nation of Israel. But he realizes that a part of the nation of Israel is still under the Jebusites. A part of the nation of Israel is still under the Jebusites. It's like in Kenya, where normally we, we usually fight over a place called Migingo. Where the Ugandans say that the water around Migingo is in Uganda, but Migingo is in Kenya, definitely. How can you cross over to an island when the waters around are not yours? And so David is being told that you know what? You cannot come here. You cannot occupy Jerusalem. Why? Because even the blind and the lame will not allow you to get in. Praise the name of the Lord. That was like trying to look down, to trample down David, just like the name Jebusites were. When you think of an army, like the army that David was leading, and you think that a particular small tribe is able to tell them that, you know what, we do not even need to bring our armed forces. We will just place the blind around there, and the blind will make you not to come. And many times, even right now, that the Lord has given us the word, of his word, and he's talking of new territories, he's talking of new horizons, there are Jebusites somewhere who are going to try and occupy our minds and tell us we are not able. But this morning, I'm here to encourage someone to tell them that there is no portion that the Lord has promised to us that we will not occupy. Praise the name of the Lord. Whether there are blind that he thinks he will place there, we will occupy every single inch as families. We will occupy every single inch as a church in the name of the Lord. And so David is in that situation. And I was thinking, why would they have thought of the lame and the blind Looking at a few readings here and there, I was realizing that, number one, these particular people, the Jebusites, were using the name lame and blind to tell David that, you know what, your king, your army is not so strong. They were trying to look down on him. They were trying to taunt him. That was one possibility. The second possibility was that at the very walls that were surrounding Jerusalem, the Jebusite kingdom, at the very walls, they had placed their idols. 
And the idols had eyes, but could not. They had legs, but they could not walk. Praise the name of the Lord. We are still taking territories, tell your neighbor. We are taking territories. Whether the devil likes it or not. Let's go back to the scripture. 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 6. So they are telling, the Jebusites are telling David, you shall not come in here, but the blind and the lame will repel you. It's as if they are saying, we have placed our gods around the world. Those very gods whom you are calling lame, those very gods whom you are calling deaf, those very gods whom you are calling blind, they will not allow you to come in here. And as we move in oneness, in unity as a church, we have many campuses to occupy. Praise the name of the Lord. But I want to tell you that even as we are moving as one united force, we will need to do certain things because those campuses have been occupied by others. But it is time for us to just walk there, walk the length, walk the breadth, and decree and declare that right here where our feet are treading upon, a church shall arise in the name of Jesus. We have already started occupying Shiloh. We do not care about the lame and the blind that are all along Mirema Drive. We are going to walk into those places and we are decreeing and declaring that whatever difficulties we will endure, we will walk into the territories and occupy. Wow. Nothing shall hinder us. No amount of altars shall hinder us. Because we prescribe to an altar that is way higher, way bigger than any other altar that exists in this nation. Praise the name of the Lord. I remember as soon as we started working in, uh, uh, rather meeting in Shiloh, it's like the pubs also decided they are going to open full blast. You walk around that places and it's looking just nasty. But you know what? Those will be our potential customers in church. Praise the name of the Lord. We will win them. As we close those pubs in the name of the Lord. But it will take you to be a warrior. It will take me to be a warrior. For we are not going just to walk as we are smiling. The enemy does not know the language of smiles. He does not know diplomacy. And that's why the Bible says as you go on. David said that whoever will, cl will climb through the water shaft. Let's look at verse 7. Whoever will climb through the water shaft. That was a difficult task to do. And no wonder David was saying, I am going to make him the captain. Because he knew, yes, he had an army. But for him to be able to get into the nation, now that they had placed several things around the wall, they were going to look for a strategy to get into Jerusalem. And we too must look for a strategy to get into Shiloh, a strategy to get into Kiukenda, a strategy to get into Ngumba, a strategy for you and your family, not just the church. As we map up the strategies for the church to move, you as an individual will need to map up a strategy that will bring you from your comfort zone so that you can get to the place the Lord has promised you. Praise the name of the Lord. In the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 54, verse 2 and 3. Isaiah 54, verse 2 and 3. If we can have that, Isaiah 54, verse 2 and 3. Enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. Three, for you shall expand to the right and to the left, and your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited. Praise the name of the Lord. Verses four. Do not fear. Do not do what? Fear, for you will not be 
ashamed. If you've ever been ashamed in the past, the Bible is telling us today, do not be afraid because you are not going to be ashamed a second time. Neither be disgraced for you will not be put to shame. It's an emphasis that the prophetic word here is telling us. For you will forget the shame of your youth and will not remember the reproach of your widowhood anymore. As we are moving Against the blind and the lame, like David did, there is one thing that we will need to do. We will need to strengthen our stakes. We will need to enlarge our tents. Now, the enlarging will not be done by the Lord. It will be done by you and I. We will enlarge. What are some of the processes of enlarging? We will enlarge by prayer. Praise the name of the Lord. We will enlarge by giving. Mm -hmm. We will enlarge by volunteering to do one thing or another so that our tent can be large enough to contain the new horizons, to contain the new frontiers, and to contain the new territories. If someone promises you that they are going to give you um, something, they are going to give you something, but they tell you, come with a gift, come with a, with a container, sorry, come with a container. The size of the gift that you'll be given will be determined by the kind of container you are going to carry. Once upon a time, I think it was in, I don't know whether it was one of the encounters, when Mom Alice gave us an example of this king that was told, uh, that told the subjects uh, there was going to be a bash in the palace. And so every person who was invited was supposed to come with a gift. And some of the people came with gifts, but they were like, the king is too rich. Why would he even ask us for a gift? And so they brought very small containers of gifts, while others were very excited. They brought in big containers of gifts. And as they got into the palace after eating and were excited, the king commanded his servants to empty the gifts that every person had brought. And so every person's container was emptied into the, uh, into the place that the king had instructed. And then the king told the servants that, you know what, fill, fill every container and give to the owner. Now you can imagine what happened with those that had small containers. Born as if we must do what? Enlarge. Because God is going to pour as per our enlargement. You enlarge a little, he will pour in a little. You enlarge big on the right to the left, he will pour in all those blessings that he's talking of in big quantities. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, I am going to enlarge. Tell the other one, I'm not going to bring small. Praise the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verses 3. Joshua 1, 3. For every place that your, the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you. Praise the name of the Lord. I have given you. And then in Genesis, chapter 13, verses 15, God is saying to Abraham, for all that land you see, I give to you and your descendants forever. All that land that you see, I give to you and your descendants forever. And just like we started, I'm winding up. Just like we started and we were saying that you have to be close to God so that he can just let you look through his binoculars. So he is telling Abraham, you have come close to me. You have been building for me altars as we walk along. I want you to look. Now they have walked. They've been to Bethel. They've been to Sechem. They are now in a place in Genesis chapter 13 when they have separated with the Lord. And Abraham is still walking with God. They are still in fellowship. And the Lord is telling him, come and see through my binoculars. As far as you can see through this eyes of mine, I am going to give you as an inheritance. I'm giving you and your descendants forever. My question today is, what are you going to do to be able to get the new horizons? Praise the name of the Lord. 
Number one that you will do, then we finish, is you must be willing to leave the place of commonality, the place of comfort zone. If we used to pray for five minutes, we must move and enlarge. Praise the name of the Lord. We must leave the places that are common and get to those places that we have never been before because God wants to bless you and God wants to bless us. Praise the name of the Lord. We must get to a higher stair. When you are coming into the church, there are normally some steps outside there. You cannot say that you're going to jump from down there up this way. You have to go step by step. We must move step by step. The only thing that you cannot afford to do as an individual and that we cannot afford to do as a church is to stay stationary on one place. We must start moving. And we are not going to start moving next year. We are starting to move today. Praise the name of the Lord. We are starting to decree and declare today. We are taking the first step today as the Lord is helping us around. He is going to give us the horizons. What is it that you've been trusting God for as a family? You're starting to move today in the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. I'm going to ask us just to rise up on our feet. You alone knows the new horizons you've been trusting God for. You alone knows the new territories you've been trusting God for. And I want to give you a minute or two to tell the Lord this is where I am going. And yes, you could be knowing those, uh, those uh, barriers that have been barring you from getting into those new territories. Tell the Lord, strengthen me, anoint me. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8, and you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And then that power is supposed to help you do what become a witness. When you are empowered, you can be able to take territories. When you are empowered, you can be able to take new frontiers. You'll be able to get to the new horizons with the power that the Lord is giving to you. So just lift your voice and tell him, Father, this is what I want for my family. Tell him, Father, this is what I want for my job. Father, this is what I want for Deliverance Church Kasarani Zimmerman, that within the next five years, we will be able not only to have one walked into Shiloh, but we will be able to walk into Kukenda. We'll be able to walk into Ngumba. We will be able to have expanded, and not just expanding by structures only, but expanding even by members whom the Lord is going to give us. Because we are depopulating the enemy's kingdom, we are taking territories for the Lord Jesus Christ. Those areas that have been called the areas of the Twilight Girls will be areas where evangelism will be done. We are taking those areas in the name of the Lord. We are taking Zimmerman in the name of the Lord. And God is giving them unto us. The Bible says, ask of me and I'll give you the nations as an inheritance for you. You can ask and you can ask big in the name of Jesus. Father, we want to bless you. We want to give you praise, oh God. We want to give you honor because you are a good God. Thank you, Jehovah God, for the word that you gave to us, our Father. Thank you, King in glory that you're talking of new frontiers. We may not have seen the places, oh God. We may not even know what territories, my God, you're giving to us, our Father. Lord, we want to pray that you're going to help us to see the places that you want us to go into, our Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. We are calling my Father for Zimmerman. We are calling Jehovah God for Isambu. We are calling for, for Githurai 44. We are calling my God in the mighty in name of Jesus. We are calling for the diap diaspora virtually my father in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And Lord we just want to release our lives to you as individual families my God. We are calling my father for marriages for them who are single in this place oh God. We are calling for good marriages my God for them who are married. We are calling for good children my God who my father will be able to inherit my father the land in the name of Jesus. Daddy, we want to give you praise and we want to give you honor. You are good and there is none like you. Maybe you are there and you do not know the Lord as Savior. How can you take new territories? How can he even give you a glimpse if you're there 
and you want to give your life to Christ, just lift your hand. We will pray for you and we will meet after. You are there. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Just lift your hands high. Lift them high. Thank you so much. I can see that hand. If an usher can help our brother come. Thank you, Jesus. Someone else. Someone else. Someone else who wants to join with our brother. Giving you praise. Giving you praise. Okay. Okay. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, we want to thank you. We want to bless your name, oh God. And we give you praise because you are a good God. Yes, we will walk. And yes, the lame and the blind will not stop us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are occupying, oh God. We are occupying territories as you give it to us step by step. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much.